Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create vivid, vibrant sky within Photoshop. So to get started, we're going to open up Photoshop. Then I'm going to open up the image for today's tutorial, which is a flag image. And once we have that, I'm just going to double click on the background layer to make it a workable layer. And then zoom in. So for today's tutorial, we're going to have two different methods of creating vivid sky. So the first method involves using an adjustment layer, and that's a little bit faster. Um, it gives you a little less control. And then the other way involves using a gradient, which gives you a little bit more control, but it's not quite as fast. So um, what we need to do first is get the adjustment layer. So we're going to be using the vibrance adjustment layer, and you can get to that by going to image adjustments and then vibrance, or you can come down here, which is what I would uh, suggest, which is this little half circle. Um, it's half black, half white, and you click that and you have all of the adjustment layers right there and you can click vibrance. And why I recommend that is because it actually creates its own layer and you can adjust that later rather than it just automatically applying it, which is what that does from going to image adjustments. So to actually get to the settings again, we're just going to double click this icon on the left of the adjustment layer. And you can see that there's two different options. We have vibrance and saturation. And we're going to be using the vibrance one today. And we're just going to take and start moving that up. And as you can see, as I move that up, it makes all of the colors start to come out more. Um, from the original gray of the sky, um, which is just the default from the picture that we took, um, you can see that it makes a full turnaround to the nice blue vivid sky. And it also brings out the colors in the building and in the flag right here. So that's a pretty nice uh, effect right there. But I'm going to show you how you can use the gradient as well. So we're going to go back to layers. And then I'm going to turn this off and we're going to go back to the original picture. And I'm just going to make a quick selection of the sky by grabbing the magic wand tool. So by holding shift, I can add to that selection. And there we go. That's pretty good. So now I'm just going to grab the marquee tool, right click, and go to layer via copy. And as you can see right there, um, it's created a new layer. And I'm just going to turn this uh, base layer off here. And you can see that it's created a layer of just the sky. So we have only the sky, the clouds, and the building, and the flag. They're all uh, cut out. So we can adjust just this layer and just the sky. So I'm just going to turn that back on. And what we're going to do is uh, create the gradient now. So we need to pick our colors. So over here in the foreground and background, um, it doesn't really matter which order they're in. The first one you need to pick needs to be a color that's close to um, the clouds in my case or the bottom of your sky in your case because you want it to blend nicely from whatever other color we pick to the natural color so it doesn't show that we've made a selection. Um, feathering also helps to ease that in. So we're just going to select a color right there by the clouds. Click OK. And then for the other color, I can just switch that by clicking the little arrows there. Um, I have this color which is 2F85E5 which is just this vibrant blue up here. You can really select anything you want. Um, I'm just going to select that, click OK. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to move this layers palette out so that you guys can see. And I'm just going to click this little FX button right here. And we're going to go down to gradient overlay. And now you can see this already applied this and hence this is the reason why I said select a color that is close to the uh, natural color because when you get down here you can see the selection if you haven't feathered it or you don't blend it very well. So we're just going to start working with our gradient. We're going to click reverse first to put the black up here and I'm just going to put this right here somewhere around 45 so that it moves the darker part up there more like how the picture was actually taken originally with the gradient coming um, from the top right to the bottom left. So now we're just going to click on this gradient anywhere where this color is and then we're going to be able to select the colors for the gradient and since we've already picked them over here it's going to be really easy. So for the black one we're just going to click on the um, blue that we selected, the dark or the um, vibrant blue, click OK and then for the white side we're just going to select the natural color and click OK and OK and OK. So now you can see we have a pretty vibrant sky and it's almost a little unrealistic so what we're going to do is we're just going to lower the opacity down to somewhere around like 60 and you can see the before and after of that and it's really brought up the sky and you can even go further with this and make it a little bit more vibrant or adjust the colors or make an adjustment layer or something um, and it gives you a little bit more option than just vibrance and just saturation within the sky. So I just want to show you both ways so that you can decide on your own which way is the best for you. And you can see before and after of that and before and after of that. And both methods tend to give you um, very vivid, very nice, uh, vibrant sky. So um, I would recommend doing this to any of your images that you really want to just make the colors pop in, um, bring up the sky because you might not notice it initially, but once you start adjusting the sky, it can really bring up the life of the photo. 
Um, so I hope you guys learned something in today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.